What is an experteer? Find out today from Mark Horshevsky of Moving Worlds. Mark, welcome, and just, I gotta know what's an experteer. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, Stan. Uh, an experteer is anybody who wants to volunteer their professional skills. So it's just the combination of the word volunteering and expertise. Why would I volunteer my professional skills? Why wouldn't I want to get paid for it? Yeah, well, you know, it depends on, on your motivation. Uh, typically, what we see is people are really interested in, take like an early to mid-career professional, really mm -hmm. interested in developing their skills in a new, new and unique way. So volunteering their skills or experteering ends up being a great way to learn new skills, get new insights into an organization, or as we primarily deal with when we help people travel overseas and do this, is a very you know, international, immersive experience. Mm -hmm. Now the we is movingworlds.org, and uh, we've got that up on the screen. This is a fun website, absolutely fun website, so I applaud you about that. Uh, but you know, in a real brief nutshell, what is Moving Worlds? Yeah, it's, it's a matching site and a support team that helps people go experteering anywhere that they want to travel for any length of time, either on their own or through a corporate-sponsored leadership program. Okay. Who is Mark Horshevsky? Yeah, that's me. Uh, so, um, long-time volunteer. Uh, you know, ever since I was young, I grew up volunteering. I actually graduated with a degree in accounting and then got a master's in accounting. I actually worked in accounting for a little while uh, and then tried to kind of merge my passion a little bit with still, you know, business and business acumen, mm -hmm. but uh, also with finding a way that I could use my skills to contribute to the greater good. So I ended up in, in healthcare marketing for a while and, and really enjoyed that. But then I took a year just kind of reflection growth time and I spent a year traveling and volunteering my skills around the world for a year and that's really where the genesis for moving worlds came about and people randomly started to message me on my on my blog saying oh that's cool do you know of a place in you know Uzbekistan or Laos or anywhere else and slowly I just started to make connections for people and Lo and behold. <laughs> so out, out of passion, the business of Moving Worlds, because it is indeed a business. It, it is, correct, yeah. But it's a B Corporation. Right? Correct. So here in the state of Washington, we're a Washington Social Purpose Corporation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, if you read our articles of incorporation, we read very much like a nonprofit. Mm. Um, something really interesting. You had a, an article recently on uh, the Huffington Post, and there's a quote from you. Counterintuitive as it may be. Uh, if you truly want to make a positive impact, don't ask what an organization needs. Ask what you are best at giving and then go give that. Whoa, that's kind of different. Yeah. We, you know, it's kind of a weird stance to take, but, you know, as a social impact organization, our mission is actually not just to help people, it's actually to help organizations on the ground. Typically, we support small, locally-led organizations, the one that have the greatest potential to create jobs and solve last-mile challenges. What we keep hearing from them is that more so than access to capital, what they need is skills. Right? So they need an accounting system before they need a grant. They need a, a video or marketing material before they launch a new website. And so these are primarily skills-based challenges. And in exchange, they can, you know, they can provide a really unique, international, immersive experience. And so as we, as we you know, kind of coach or encourage people to go volunteer their skills, what we say is, don't look at projects and figure out what's most exciting. Figure out what are you best at? Where do you want to keep growing and where do you want to go? And then we can actually find you the place where you can give really the best of yourself and in exchange get the best kind of international experience. Well, that really is a different approach. And, and actually, I, I find it kind of refreshing because sometimes uh, I've in the past have volunteered and I've just kind of just showed up. And I mean, I know that there are things that I can do better, but sometimes I'm, you know, back in the back hammering nails. Sure. And I got to tell you, that's not what I'm best at. Sure, sure. <laughs> so it's interesting. Let's talk more about the organization. Sure. And, and this is off your website. Let's, cool. Let your experience be vast. Very, very cool. But you talk about experteering. Mm -hmm. And again, we've already talked about that. But uh, 10,000 hours, 100 organizations, 40 plus countries. Yeah. My gosh. How can you do all that? Yeah, the kind of international volunteering space, if you will, is, is very interesting, right? It's, you know, there's a lot of challenges in actually vetting and finding organizations on the ground that can really use expertise. Uh, there's a lot of challenges in preparing them and getting them ready to host volunteers and be a good host. On the other side, a lot of challenges in terms of finding the right people, educating them on international volunteering best practices. So we've really kind of taken a lesson from other industries that have supported matches at scale. And mm -hmm. you know, the dating industry is one great example of that. Yeah. You know, so you provide some curation, you provide some content, but usually use technology to do the hardest work of getting people matched 
and then actually forcing them through a planning process in partnership with their host organization. So instead of you know having to put one of our own staff members on the ground in every place to verify partners or organizations, you know, we instead use technology to help with that. And then we also developed a, a really rather large international partnership network so that organizations on the ground who have a vested interest in helping their own partners grow are able to help mm -hmm. us achieve some of those. So, you know, with that, we're able to get to some pretty big numbers, you know, pretty quickly. Did you actually, in developing your software and in developing your whole concept, did you actually take some of the ideas from the dating industry? Yeah, so um, dating industry, uh, you know, global development industry, the Peace Corps, we've had advisors from, you know, who do leadership development for, you know, Fortune 50 companies all the way down to, um, you know, Peace Corps fellows who came back and said, this, these are tips from the ground about how you can make these experiences better for everyone. And I hope you're going to be able to talk about some of the experiences that the people have had and, and some of your own as well. But, but let's just talk about, about your, your whole program as to what right. you do. First off, you say it's an, uh, an alternative to the Peace Corps. Um, are you saying that there's something wrong with the Peace Corps? No, not at all. I, in fact, we really like the Peace Corps. We've done some promotion campaigns with them. One was called Doing More, about getting more people to use their skills for mm -hmm. good. So I guess um, what's different yeah. between you and the Peace Corps? And so, um, you know, earlier you said, well, who would volunteer their skills for free, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and what we find are six popular reasons why they do that. So a lot of people want to do the Peace Corps, but 27 months is a really, really long time, right? Mm -hmm. But we find organizations that they'll, they'll give you a free place to live for a week of your time. And so whether it's a week or, or one month or one year, we can still get you connected into the best place. So we see a lot of people who want to do the Peace Corps but can't afford the 27-month time frame. So is it like an alternative to um, an adventure vacation? It's one way of thinking about it, yeah. All right. Well, let's go to something else. Sure. Then. For economical and impact travel while in retirement, is, is are you seeing a lot of people in retirement are coming to you and saying, you know, Mark, uh, we want to do something. We don't just want to sit around and play yeah. shuffleboard. Yeah, it's it's our third biggest demographic on the site, right? And and some of them, you know, did Peace Corps way back when, and now they want to go back. But um, you know, they're they're looking to maybe see new parts of the world, or they also want a little more ownership of the type of experience, right? They've spent thirty years or sometimes more really developing their skills in a key sector, and they're really really passionate about that. So mm -hmm. This becomes a way for them to say, you know, this is really the type of experience I want. This is where I want to be in the world. And, and then we can help them find those places. What are the most needed skills that you find? You know, it, almost picture your, your local startup or local nonprofit, right? And think about the type of skills that they would need. And, and that's what we see. So um, uh, anything accounting and finance related is always a big one. A lot of elements around business strategy, operations, supply chain, depending on the type of organization. We see marketing and sales a lot, which is actually really exciting for us mm. because what it typically means is somebody's developed a solution and now they're trying to get it out to more people. Uh, the, a lot of the creative talents was one that caught us uh, the most by surprise. Videographers, photographers, uh, designers, people who can help bring their brands and stories to life. Um, and then, of course, a lot also around um, like business development and partnership building. So those, those are probably the five biggest, but we've seen you know architects and engineers and mathematicians and economists needed as well. So. Well, you know, I would have expected uh, you know farming skills, sure. agricultural skills, or IT. I would have expected those, and I didn't hear either one of them. Yeah, I you know they've been there, and we've made we've made placements, um, but yeah, the the biggest it's really about helping organizations with their growth challenges. Hmm. Uh, and so a lot of times you see those more in kind of those core business functions. Um, I only speak one language. Sure. Um, how, how can I help in an Eastern European country, let's sure. say, that is developing yeah. uh, and needs me to speak something else? Sure. So um, language is definitely critical. I, if you can't communicate, then you can't communicate. No technology is going to bridge that gap. That said, there might be an Eastern European organization that is actually looking for help, not within their own country, but maybe expanding into international partnerships or sales. So I don't have an exact experience for Eastern Europe, but we actually had a expert here go down to Brazil, didn't speak any Portuguese, but it was a small startup that was trying to procure international businesses to come do business there. And she had the exact fit of the skills that they, that they needed. She needed to be able to speak English to international businesses, and uh, in the eighteen months that she went, she was experteering there. They grew from a six-person startup to a seventy-person startup. Mm. You're listening out there, and you're probably thinking about what's the process that you go through. We're going to get to the process in just a minute, but we've got some other things to go through. I just think this is such an exciting thing. Movingworlds.org, by the way. 
um, for a meaningful vacation that is very economical. We kind of touched on that sure. before. Um, it, how economical, yeah. I guess, is what I'm asking. So um, we, we don't charge organizations to find volunteers, right? They, they're enough resource strap. But what we ask them to do is provide the volunteer a free place to live while that volunteer is working with them. And so what it ends up being is free place to, to live in usually a really cool location. So we've had free accommodation for people who have gone a week and for some people that have gone for a year. And so that's, you know, that wow, that's, a big experience. Wow, that is something. So, so, so go live rent-free for a year. Yeah. Wow, you may not like what you're living in, but you know what, you, you, you know what you're getting into, right? Right. Let's go to the next one. To see the world and gain new skills while on a sabbatical. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, we, you know, this was another one that we were really hoping would work, and it's coming on really strong, which is, you know, people that are 5, 10, 15 years into their career, they're starting to question if it's really where they want to finish their career. And you don't have to quit, but you can take some extended time off, and gain exposure to new industries, Go flex your skills in a, in a new and unique way. And so you end up building new skills. You end up solving one of the biggest problems facing global development. And then at the end of the day, it's a really cool opportunity to go see someplace else while you take time away. You know, interestingly enough, a, a lot of people may be thinking that, you know, taking a sabbatical is a luxury. But actually, some companies, uh, more and more companies are requiring it of executives yeah. because executives get burnt out. Exactly. Yeah. And so what you're saying is that they can rekindle their passion. Uh, and it may be a passion for something else, though. Yeah, and, and it could be. But it's, a, it's an incredible growth experience. And so like we actually have some companies that are paying us to help their employees go do this because they're seeing the, the development uh, that comes out for the individual mm -hmm. itself in the program. So. What's the highest level person in a company yeah. that you've had go somewhere? I've had go. It's a good question. Probably uh, a director level. Mm -hmm. So not, 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 not in the C-suite, but reporting into it. Wow. And so that person could go away for a week on a vacation, yeah. for sure, yep. but for six months, maybe on a sabbatical? Yep. yep. Or in a rotation between roles. You know, I, a lot of, you know, one of the biggest, actually, uh, corporate challenges to developing its future workforce is globally minded leaders. And, and mm. a lot of companies purposely rotate their individuals through diverse roles or even give them international placements. But not every company has an international office or you know, not every company wants to see that person to go for two years. So here's a way to send them for maybe a shorter length of time into an area of geographical interest. Have companies come to you and said, Mark, we're thinking about expanding into X and then fill in the blank, but we want to try it out first. Can you help us? Yeah, we, we haven't seen that. Um, but what we have seen is, you know, like we're very interested in, you know, this country or, or this geography, right? And um, key, one of the keys to success that we know of is, you know, like our smaller field partners. So can we actually, can you help us connect our uh, employees to go volunteer with them to help them develop their skills, their know-how, or even their sites? Let's go to the next one. This again off the website, sure. uh, movingworlds.org. To gain experience and develop skills in addition to education. Yeah. So this is for probably a younger demographic. Younger demographic, right? And typically for us, what we see is coming out of a master's program. So, mm -hmm. hey, I've got some new great theory, lots of great case studies, probably some big presentations, but have actually done a, an m and &E evaluation in the field, right? And, um, you know, there's... We always look for you to have some demonstrable skills that you've done before, before planting you into an organization. Yeah. But chances are, a lot of these organizations, again, are small, they're locally led, and so what you bring to the table is a lot more than they have access to. Oh, amazing, yeah. amazing. Okay, so now, finally, uh, to fully immerse in another country and, and culture. Yeah. And I've always heard that full immersion is a way to understand uh, a, you know, a country. You, yeah. you can't just do it going and visiting. Right. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, this is one that, um, and no judgment here is all, but this is kind of the more the most selfish of them all, right? Which is really, uh, you know, I just really want to know what it's like to live, you know, overseas. Maybe because I'm thinking about doing that career in some point, or maybe that's where my family is originally from, and I really want to go back there and spend a concentrated effort. Hmm. So instead of being a, a tourist there, you're actually working with people of and from the community. Again, they're locally led organizations, so you really get to tap in, and, you know, some of our organizations you know, offer a, 
you know, they're very small, one or two person nonprofits, right? They can't give you a very nice place to live, but they can give you cooking lessons and language practice. So we see organizations come up with creative offerings in a way to help kind of recruit and, and motivate people to come. Now, something that just comes to mind is that there is a really strong marketing push right now going on to uh, reach U.S. retirees and said, come live internationally, it's much less expensive. Um, is that the kind of person who may go and try out the waters first? Yeah, sure. That's, that's an interesting point. Um, you know, if, if I kind of think about a lot of the, the retired folks that we've worked with before, um, they're, uh, I can't say that any of them have, have been that person. Mm -hmm. um, they're interested in coming home or they have family, but it's not to say that they couldn't. Uh, we're very fortunate to be talking with Mark Korshevsky, uh, movingworlds.org. Uh, that, that's the website in any event. Moving Worlds is in a really, really interesting organization based around the concept of experteering. That's what we're talking about today. Be sure to go to the website to learn more. Let's learn about some of the opportunities. Sure. I was very, very excited to see you've got this global map up on the website and you've got all of these different descriptions of different places to go. And the very first place I see is in Argentina, very well-developed country. Sure. Yeah, um, you know, and and um, there's opportunities in in Europe and and in the United States too. You know, mm. I think there's every every single country has a um, you know a pretty big spread of you know income and and uh, needs. And so we see that that every every location really has a need for skills in some way. So, well, I see some of the dots are in the United States. Yeah. So you've got some inside the United inside, States as well. Yeah, inside the United States. And, well, what kind of opportunities are there? Yeah. So we've seen some things about like local impact investing networks. So you know, how do we connect um, the uh, kind of new or smaller nonprofit or social initiatives within the states? And a lot of a lot of organizations in the states are actually adopting global development and global health best practices to reach. Uh, some of their most impoverished communities because they've seen internationally it's been able to be accomplished at a fraction of the cost. So hmm. uh, pretty interesting when we see that. It's not the most common, right? Typically we see people going into uh, India and East and West Africa and, and Central and South America. But um, yeah, we, we've got a spread of opportunities. Um, the overriding theme throughout yeah. your website, though, is make an impact. Yeah. I see that so much throughout the website. Yeah. Uh, is that what people are telling you? Say, you know, Mark, I don't care where you send me, uh, but I want to make an impact. Sure. You know, it's um, it, it's one of the biggest motivations that we see. Uh, but, you know, kind of in that remark that we've made earlier about, you know, being selfish in your service, right? Mm -hmm. What we really try and say is one of the biggest barriers to, to global progress, and this is as reported by, you know, the World Economic Forum, Gates Foundation has come out about the importance of capacity building. Um, impact investing networks have claimed the same thing, that a lack of access to expertise and talent is one of the leading barriers. So what, what we really try and say is wherever you want to go, we are going to connect you into a place that is actually going to make an impact. And some people, that's all they care about. But other people, you know, it's really more about maybe utilizing their skills first and having a cool project. And the impact just happens to be a nice, you know, icing on the cake, so to say. What kind of feedback do you get from the people who you've sent? I mean, I, I can't imagine that all of it's wonderful. Some of sure. it may not be great. Yeah. You know, one, one of our expert tiers wrote, it was for 70 days, wrote one word per day to represent her experience. And you read it and it's a roller coaster, right? And you know, I spent a year volunteering around the world myself and I can attest to it, it it's a roller coaster. Um, you know, we had one expert here who broke out in hives after the last couple of days out of, out of being so nervous. And um, what we actually find and what we try and say is that roller coaster is a really good thing, right? It's, it's reality, uh, not just for, for you when you come home, but also for the organizations. But what we also find, we're starting to draw a correlation is that in that discomfort is more learning. Uh, not just about yourself, not just about challenges, but also the organizations and new skills. So, you know, it, it is a roller coaster. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, what we consistently hear from people is, you know, not what I expected. I wish I spent more time planning. And uh, now I'm more confident to go do that thing that I want to do. So this is not like a reality show where you go and you do your filming, you know, for eight hours a day, and then you go out and, and you stay in a very nice trailer. Yeah. This is not that. No, no. Now, this is the real deal. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's go into the process sure. then. All right, you, we, the first two parts, you, you uh, create a free profile and mm -hmm. then you pick a plan. Yeah. When, when you say profile, I mean, I'm so used to going on websites and I create the profile, I can create them in my sleep. Sure. Is this one different? You know, it's, it's pretty similar. We try and make it as easy as possible. Really what we need to know from you are what skills do you have? 
where do you want to go in the world? What causes do you care most about? And how much time do you have? <clears throat> and if you do that, then we can actually start to suggest the types of projects that are going to be the best fit for you. Mm -hmm. And the pick a plan, that looks like that's how much dollars you're going to spend. Exactly. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute, okay. so we'll skip by that. Sure. Find a match. Yep. So, you know, we, we use technology to suggest the different projects that relate to you. Mm -hmm. So you get a, you can wait for us to email you the one that's the best fit, which happens on a weekly basis, or you can go and use our search tool and really find the opportunities that you think are the best fit for you. Sometimes you won't see it. About a third of our experts here actually don't see an opportunity they love. They send us a message, they let us know what they want to see, and then we go work with our partnership network to go find them new opportunities. So, All right, so if I were to come to you and say, I'm, I'm decent with a video camera, yeah. if I were to say that to yeah. you, you uh, and I say, but I don't see anything you know, on your site, yeah. what would you do? Yeah, so um, we have a partnership network with organizations as big as Gates you know, and you know, as small as the you know, one-person nonprofit in Panama you've never heard of. And, <laughs> and, and we've got a, a growing collection of the type of skills that they need and they've essentially said, hey, if you find a person with this availability and these skills, you know, let us know. We have so many needs, we can't possibly post enough opportunities on your website. So keep those in mind. So what we do then is we go through our database and we go reach out on your behalf to make sure that we have a project. Well, let's go to take our training then. What kind of training do you offer? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, working in another culture is interesting. Volunteering is interesting. And what we really try and do is prepare you to be effective especially because you're, you're, if you're using our service, you're most likely crossing some borders and there's communication differences and cultural differences. So we have an online training. You can take it at your own pace. And, and essentially what it does is it prepares you not only to be safe and secure in, in your travel, but I think you know, really to get the meat out of this experience to, to really truly uh, engage and understand best practices for working across borders. Does the ugly American still exist? You know, d despite our training, um, it can exist. So we, we try really hard. Our favorite tip is to, to shut up and listen. So we, we try and knock that out of it. But, um, you know, we've actually seen the ugly fill in the blank. We've seen really uh, random practices from all kinds of people. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. Okay, you open the door. you got to tell me about it <laughs> some of them. Yeah, uh, you know, one guy wore a GoPro um, to, to all his meetings. Oh, he did really he? really wanted to document the spirits in the organization. So, ah, you know, it's not, it made us feel awkward, right? Yeah, what is that weird yeah. thing on your head, yeah. fellow? <laughs> and, and he was he was from Cameroon. He, you know, he was an American. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was really interesting. So uh, it happens, and, and we try and prep both sides to not only not do that, but also how to deal with it in case something like that happens. Yeah, well, so what do you do? So what did he do in the, in the instance where people were not really comfortable with him having a yeah. camera on them all the time? You know, so... What was the name of that show, Ed? Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, stepping a little bit back in the process, when we make a match, we don't say, hey, here's your project in, uh, you know, in Panama, go. We say, hey, here's a host organization from Panama. Get on a Skype call and work through this planning guide together. Mm. And in that planning guide, you actually have a section that says, what do we do if we miscommunicate and how do we handle that? So it gives people a, a foundation to have those tougher conversations. Follow our planning so, process. You know, what is the planning yeah, process? So the, the match happens, and then you get connected for a Skype call, uh, and you chat through a discussion guide that we provide. Then you come back, and both you as the experteer and also the host organization come back to the Moving World support team and say, We've spoken, and yes, I want to continue. And if we get an affirmative from both sides, then we match you to an online planning document. Six pretty big, meaty sections. Some people have complained about the length. Uh, one of our favorite ones called it a pain in the ass, and then she came back afterwards and said, oh, I wish I spent more time doing it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what it does is it documents everything from project success, how we're measuring impact, how do we talk about long-term sustainability, all the way to how do we communicate effectively mm -hmm. as partners, and then we and we get down into safety and security. And how do you measure? How do you measure impact? It's a really tough one being on the volunteer side. But what we really, really look to do is say, you know, the you as a as an expert here and you as a hosting organization, you have the best idea of what impact is going to look like. So you define your own metric one year in the future after the project ends, so that you're designing for long term. And then we follow up to track that success. So then you go get on a plane. i got to ask you this. Yeah. Has anybody said, I, I want to go make sure that, that the penguins on the polar ice cap are doing okay? We haven't gotten the polar ice cap. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> I, would, I would like to go check that. Yeah, that, that would be kind of fun. Yeah. But, um, you know, what is the furthest away that you've sent yeah. somebody? Let's see. Um, so we've had actually somebody from, from Seattle, where, where we're filming the show today. We've had somebody from, from Seattle um, go to... Uh, Indonesia and to New Zealand, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty far. Um, 
We've had people from uh, now Indonesia and New Zealand are really different countries. So right. Indonesia is not particularly well developed, but New Zealand is very well developed very, country. Yeah. So you, we, we see that diversity. You know, South America to Europe, we've seen those exchanges mm. too. So. Let's, uh, let's go through a couple of other sure. things. Preparing yourself. Yeah. And it seems to me that this is probably the most important thing. This is preparing yourself. One. Exactly. Uh, one, when you talk about that, let's go plan high impact. Yeah. Um, how can I plan high impact in a country I've never been, in a language that I've never spoken, yep. with an organization that I've only met through Skype? Sure. So that's kind of that, that tip of shut up and listen. So <laughs> what we look and say is, look, impact and the project is driven locally by the organization. And you're, you're actually stepping in to help them plan for the long term and create long term success. So uh, that kind of planning guide positions you to not go and try and implant your own idea, but to support those local projects. Best practices. What's yeah. that mean? Yeah. So, um, how do you uh, communicate effectively? How do you how do you plan for success? Um, and a, and a bunch of other tips that we keep on the on the really open sourced on the website and also on the training to guide people how to be mm -hmm. effective volunteers. Now, if my mom is watching this show, this is what she's thinking yeah, about course, right here: yeah. safety. Yep. Yep. And uh, look, nobody knows safety better than the people living there. So you know, again, we connect you to the host organization. We say, have a very serious conversation about safety. Where are you going to live? Where are you going to work? How are you going to get in between? What happens in case of emergency? Mm -hmm. So nothing's happened yet. Knock on wood. We're going to keep that record for a long time. But you know, it's important. You're there. You have to. You have to own your own experience. I got an hour's worth of question, and we have two sure. minutes. <laughs> sure. So uh, let's talk about the money sure. side, because uh, again, you are a for-profit business, and so it looks like you've got three levels. Yeah. One is uh, a DIY for. Yeah. Uh, is this for a year or how long is this? Yeah, until you find your match. So typically people use it over the course of a year. And then there's a full access membership. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Yeah, so that means um, if you want to spend time on Skype with us so that we can help you choose between options or go source that custom project just for you, you know, that, that takes time for our global support team to do. And that's really mm -hmm. what that plan is able to support. And then there's the premium membership. Yeah. What does that mean? Some people want help with figuring out the best flight to take and their visas. And uh, you're a travel a agent. A lot of coaching calls, so we we swing into the travel agent space. Okay, I got to ask this question. Sure. Where are you going next? Moving worlds in five years. Uh, look, we would love to do send a volunteer <laughs> to space. <laughs> I think I think that would be interesting. You no, know, you know our we are we are a for profit corporation, but but first and foremost, we're a social purpose corporation and. The, the problem that we're trying to solve for is how do we get the right talent to the right organization that's really creating change on the ground? How do we do that more effectively and how do we get more people? And what we're really, really working on, we're laying the foundation now and we're supporting a couple of corporate programs, but we want experteering to be a rite of passage where uh, no matter what you're interested in doing, this is an opportunity, to, opportunity for you to develop new skills. And we want your, your company, no matter where you work, to be your partner and champion in that. So to give you the time to do it, to maybe even foot some of the costs. And what we're realizing is not only is that going to be transformative for you, but the benefits are also going to be hugely impactful on the ground and back to the company. So we'd like to see uh, you know thousands and thousands of more people going expert hearing. Even though this is a job, you're having fun, aren't you? We're, we're having fun. We get stories from people in the field, and that's, that's a lot of energy. Mark, thank you very much for being with us. That's been Mark Horshevsky of Moving Worlds. Take care. Mm -hmm.